Well, Recovery One is kind of unique. We're a construction and demolition recycling company. So in other words, whole buildings coming down, uh, major remodeling projects, and new buildings going up, we recycle the debris stream. Uh, we've been pretty successful at it. Uh, we run about a 98% recycling rate, day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out, documented. Um, verifiable. <laughs> I wouldn't be afraid to go up against an audit to show people what we do because it is very verifiable. And the materials that we're handling, um, we can be selective. We have to be selective right now. There's uh, certain materials that you don't want to recycle such as lead paint and asbestos. Uh, those are the two major ones that come to mind. Uh, we go to extreme lengths to make sure that, that we don't get those materials into our plant. Uh, all that being said, I can tell you straight out, we still do get them. And so then you have to be prepared, as we are, to have the people trained and the ability to deal with it and deal with it properly. So, uh, you know, not just hide it under the rug and send it to the next guy. You want to be, once you know what you have, you have to handle it responsibly. Things that we handle here, we grind and process wood. We make uh, wood fuel as our, our biggest commodity. We also make a colorized mulch product. When you're working in the mulch arena, the, the typical mulches that you're going to find around here, you're going to be competing with bark, beauty bark, very popular. Uh, beauty bark comes to you complete with bugs and other vegetation growing in it. As people see, you know, you get a lot of weeds in it and stuff. Uh, with the mulch, we're starting off with dimensional lumber, uh, some plywood, uh, some oriented strand board, and then we color it. The colorant lasts for you know, one to three years, uh, yeah, so your, pro your, you know, your, your landscaping looks better longer. We're using non-hazardous, of course, materials for the colorants, all biodegradable. And because we're t starting off with construction materials or dimensional lumber and, and plywood oriented strand board, there aren't any bugs. So it hits the ground, it's relatively sterile. The, if the beams are going to come out of the building in a manner to where they can be salvaged, they will be salvaged because they do have value. And they're not going to send them to me. So in fact, we had, there, there was a time, it was, I don't know, gosh, four or five years ago, uh, there was one of the fellows who was doing salvage wood and, and he was speaking poorly of us. He said, you know, well, oh, down there at Recovery One, they just grind everything up. You know, that's terrible. They shouldn't be doing that. And I heard about that, and, and uh, uh, Chuck, who's my uh, lab manager and, and handles a lot of things for me, um, I said, Chuck, why don't you get a hold of him and invite him down? Because clearly, if he sees anything in that pile that he thinks he can cut into smaller pieces and, and make, let me know. We'll, we'll put it to the side. He can have it. He came down here. He looked at what we were doing. He walked away. He says, no, I, I'm sorry. You guys are, <laughs> there's nothing here I want to deal with. Bear in mind, a lot of the waste that comes out of this area goes to one of two mega landfills south of here, one in north central Oregon and the other is in south central Washington. So there's a truck and a train trip involved with this waste. There's a mile-long train to leave Seattle every day going south. And when we can intercept that material in Tacoma, make a product, turn around and bring it right back into the the Puget Sound region as a usable material, we've really taken a lot of that transportation effort out of it. And usually, uh, we're significantly less in cost than, than that trip is. So the generator's saving money, uh, the end user saving money, and we're making some money in the process and, and helping the environment at the same time. That's kind of a good deal. People like to think that deconstruction has two main problems. It costs more and it takes more time. So we've been working on that for a number of years now, trying to solve that problem. Now I'm a consultant, but when I was running my uh, deconstruction company, we were winning 85% of our bids. The 85% of the people are not willing to pay more money, so therefore we must not have cost more. And what happened was we, we realized that there are ways to offset our costs 
So if you have a demolition contractor that charges 10,000 and we might be charging 12,500. So technically we cost more in the beginning, but we find and design or, or engineer ways to uh, find benefits to the owner. So we have benefits such as the tax deduction. A lot of uh, building owners will choose to donate materials to a nonprofit and they get a tax deduction for doing so. Um, that tax deduction represents a benefit that offsets the cost and uh, nine times out of 10 or 95 times out of 100, it will, uh, it will lower the net cost of deconstruction below the cost of demolition. You know, right behind me is a railing that uh, Skagit Building Salvage chose to take some of their reclaimed wood they milled it down, um, came up with a design, and then they screwed all parts of this or bolted it together. So uh, if this railing you know, gets to the end of its lifespan, there is no reason that uh, these materials can't be quickly and efficiently uh, unscrewed and unbolted. And, um, and then these materials at their full current length could be reused again and again. We, we like to see it reused in its original state, like a door is still a door, or if we come across a broken door, then we like to reuse the parts of the door, maybe to repair another door or to form another product out of, out of the reclaimed wood from the door. Now remember, uh, my perspective is from the back side of this issue. I see the materials coming out of the system or out of buildings uh, 50, 100 years later and I see quality materials that are still worth going after and putting in service for another 50 to 100 years. That's my perspective. And then I go to the stores and I have a hard time shopping at certain stores because the material is so inferior to what I see every day that I just, I can't imagine paying anything for those materials, 